Good morning. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Welcome to the November meeting of the Knoxville Historic Zoning Commission. This meeting is broadcast on several TV stations, so please remember to speak clearly and directly into the mic. Dallas, will you call the roll, please? Yes, good morning. Uh, for the record, the Knox County Historic Zoning Commission has no business and will not meet this month. So for the Knoxville Historic Zoning Commission, Commissioner Blackburn. Here. Commissioner Eason. Commissioner Bradley. Here. Commissioner Fox. Here. Commissioner Hearns. Here. Commissioner Mitchell. Here. Commissioner Randazzo. Here. Commissioner Tillman. Here. Commissioner Webster. That's seven present. Thank you, Dallas. At this time, we'll have a swearing in of the speakers. If you wish to speak on an item, please stand now and answer with I do to the following affirmation. I solemnly affirm that the testimony I'm about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. We ask that all speakers please limit their presentation to five minutes. We also ask that speakers please give their name and address before speaking. Please sign in at the desk by legibly printing your name and address. Any appeals of Historic Zoning Commission decisions may be made to Chancery Court within 60 days of the date of this meeting. At this time, I'd like to have approval of the min uh, minutes. Motion to approve. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Lindsay, will you take us through the staff reports, please? Yes. So since the last meeting, um, we've issued a level one COA at uh, 810 Winona Street. That's the removal of an existing flat roof, the installation of a new one in kind at nine Market Square. And um, the applicant is removing two existing projecting signs on the facade. This is a sort of sign directory. Um, and they are replacing it with a single sign of the same dimensions. It's a square non illuminated sign and then at 1135 Harvey Street the applicant is repairing and replacing wood lap siding um, removing and replacing one wood sill okay thank you this time we'll hear our first and only case today it's over in Fort Sanders it's 1800 Clinch Avenue and it is case number 10 F 23 HZ so this is, um, as we discussed last month, this is an after the fact review of exterior rehabilitation elements. They did not align with the HCC review and the issued COA in January, 2023. The application was postponed by the Historic Zoning Commission at the October meeting so the applicant could provide specific proposed solutions. So um, I can do a quick run through of the changes completed during construction. Um, but what we'll see on the screen here is a response document from the applicant submitted for this month, um, and I'll run through those proposed changes there. So real quick, the facade windows on the center bays of the second story, there were glass block windows installed instead of the one over one double hung windows um, as proposed. They are also longer, um, they're taller in height than the windows as proposed and the windows that are adjacent. Um, on the outside bays, these windows are slightly smaller in height and width than showed in the approved drawings. Um, the windows showed that outermost frame as aligning with the first story windows, um, but they're centered over the first. On the dormer, the windows were enclosed with a fire resistant backing. Um, on the side dormers, there were casement wind or sliding windows installed as the egress windows instead of the double hung windows that were proposed. Um, the brick masonry, uh, the COA had brick masonry and uh, brick repair and repointing to meet the specifications of the preservation brief. We had asked for clarification from the applicants on the brick used as infill, which is different in color and texture than the original. Um, and then the projecting front entry vestibule was constructed here and the doors are recessed from that primary facade now. The approved elevation drawing just had that single, um, had two multi-light exterior doors flanking a wood panel flush with the primary elevation. So the um, situations where the commission requested some specific solutions um, and these were the elements that were initially recommended for denial by staff in October. Um, the applicant has provided this response document. So the primary change, the applicant um, 
will install double hung windows in in front is proposed to install double hung windows in front of the glass block windows the applicant also proposes to retain the slider windows based on the guideline related to egress windows and then proposes that a single light window be installed in the doors for additional transparency um, just to address one of that well I'll get to that for the conditions of approval so um, this work, again, just to clarify, this, this review is after the fact. Uh, the changes to be reviewed by the Historic Zoning Commission were completed on site. They differ from the approved COA. There are fire and building code related decisions driving the changes. Um, the, these changes should have been identified in advance and brought to the Historic Zoning Commission prior to their um, construction. So to speak on the second story center windows, having these glass block windows and the window size is inappropriate for the building's design. It doesn't reflect the approved COA. Um, the initial staff recommend mission recommendation and the commission discussion noticed noted that the applicant should select double hung one over one windows and revise those window heights to match that initial approval. Um, the applicant, the application here uh, proposes installing double hung windows with a tent coat in front of the glass masonry fire protection windows in the opening. Um, and so the staff recommendation here, and I'm just going to kind of go back and forth because the staff recommendation was sort of complicated. Regarding those second story windows, the applicant should submit documentation showing the exterior windows to be installed as aligned in plane with those adjacent second story windows. So that would typically be something like a section. Um, or they should select double hung windows to replace that glass block infill, revising the fenestration opening to match the original COA and the size of the adjacent windows with a revised drawing submitted to staff for approval. Um, staff is also recommending denial of these uh, slider casement windows um, and would recommend that the double hung windows as proposed be installed. Um, and then staff recommends approval of the installation of the single light window to be installed in the new doors. Thank you, Lindsay. Oh, and then I'll just, I'll briefly clarify because we, so um, this image we had had some confusion. Some of the commissioners had seen this in person. Um, and I had asked the applicant for it to at least provide a section of how a window installed on top of these glass block windows would look like, um, whether it would be, you know, in that same horizontal plane as the adjacent double hung windows. So this one was installed, but this was actually installed prior to the previous historic zoning commission as sort of a test. Um, and I can let the applicant clarify that a little bit more, but I wanted to explain that image and what's on your screen right now. Okay. Thank you, Lindsay. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Logan Higgins, 133 South Gay Street. Uh, thank you all for being here. And uh, so I will, I'll, I want to jump into the different uh, aspects of this and, and just kind of touch on last month. A, a lot of what we wanted to cover last month was why and how things ended up very different. And, and that it just to really, um, point out that it, we didn't want it to come across like that was out of a uh, willingness to just, you know, go rogue. There were site conditions that um, happened and we really, the uh, project should have stopped and paused and everything, but uh, just wanted to give context as to why there, these things were different. So uh, to go through the changes and the compliance path here, uh, that we're hoping uh, for you guys to approve. Uh, I'll start with the the block and that condition with the what's there right now with the two pieces of glass in front of the window. That was done just as a mock up to see, and and those are not that's not even a really a double hung window. That was the windows that were there. Parts of those put back in place just to see how um, if it would fit um, to to be able to to propose this alternative option. So. Our hope with the glass block is, or well, <clears throat> just with those windows, because of the fire uh, regulations and, and requirements for, for fire rating, uh, we would request that you all uh, approve that we put back, that they put back double hung windows, and then we work with staff to figure out how that fire protection behind the windows works and whether that's uh, if it, you know, if we can't get the windows far, far enough back to be in line with the others to where it's all reads is double hung, then we'll coordinate that with staff to do something different. So, um, 
And then with these dormer windows, I want to dig into uh, why the, um, you know, why these are like this and, and why double hung doesn't really work super well. So with, I don't know if you can see on the screen there, but I'll go to this one. This picture right here, these are the double hung windows that were installed originally up there. And you can see in this section that we're between two roofs. There's the dormer roof and then the main house roof. And the, the problem is that with the header supporting that roof and then with the flashing and everything for the other roof, the windows that fit in that opening don't have the emergency egress compliance. So double hung, it's about four feet, a little less. And so when you open a double hung window, you've got less than two feet of clearance and 24 inches is the clearance requirement. So that's why they uh, installed sliders and, and why I, I have not been able to think of a, an alternative other than sliders or casement windows to make that height work there uh, because there's obviously they can't go in and rebuild the roof and raise it a few inches to make that compliant. There, there was just, um, you know, some oversight on, on that uh, throughout the process. So that's, that's why we're asking for approval on the sliders. And, and we believe that the provisions of the guidelines with the egress windows will have to be designed to comply with fire building code, fire slash building code uh, provisions, uh, I think permits something like that. And as Frustrating it is. I mean, we could go in and put horizontal pieces, trim pieces in the middle to make them appear as double hung or something. Uh, but, uh, and those are also side elevations at a, a great height. So I don't think they're highly visible. But um, the last thing, the, the front doors, we're, uh, we've been able to find a company that does uh, fire rated doors with glass. So we first looked into seeing if we could just order their glass, cut the door, place the glass in that. That won't really work with the um, UL ratings, but that company does have doors and um, can do panel doors with the glass in them. So we'll try to get, it'll have to be metal, but it'll still have that same look and it'll be inset. So that is, uh, I think that's the, the three main things. Happy to answer any questions and go from there. Thank you, Logan. Do we have any neighborhood input, Lindsay? I don't have additional input from last month. Okay, thank you. All right, open the floor up to the board for questions, comments. Um, I mentioned in the meeting last month that I wasn't as concerned about the brick color, although it's, you know, we'd, we'd love it to match perfectly. I'm I'm a little more sympathetic to that. I am concerned about the lack of a soldier roll above the existing glass block. Do you have any plans or comments or thoughts on why that wasn't there, putting it back? Was that there originally? Yeah. 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 Up at the, did it continue? Kept it because it kept the, the okay. Yeah, with the, um, that, vertical separation and stopping it was just because of they were trying to kind of match the bump out of the vestibule which was an existing bump out and uh that that's why they stopped it when they were redoing all of the brick okay thank you Lin Lindsay, do you find that that soldier row to be a significant aspect of the historical integrity of this house well to be honest i reviewed um the original photos that were submitted for the previous application and also Google Street View, and it was not super clear to me that that soldier course extended all the way across the middle. I didn't have hard evidence that it was there to begin with. So I had, that's why I had not acknowledged that one as an issue in the staff report. Thank you. Appreciate it. As far as the clear height for the fire rating, I would defer to our experts with the city of Knoxville if they have anything they would like to add or clarify, if they agree with the applicant's uh, response. So we as city staff, we are okay with what they're proposing. Um, as far as what, um, 
the timeline as as far as that goes, we would be okay with um, allowing them to wait until um, the semester is over for st the students to not displace any students um, if the board was willing um, for anything that they were going to change. 24 inches clear height is the code required minimum, 20 inches wide. So um, I'd need to look closer at that drawing and have a scale to know whether or not that's impossible. But that, those are the required openings for emergency egress. It was my understanding, though, from our last meeting that it was understood that those glass block windows needed to be rated and that they were appropriately specced at the time. So I guess my question is still, why not just rip out the glass block and put in what was specced and permitted and retain the original sill height that was presented? That, that's essentially the plan is to fix the sill height, put the double hung back up there, um, and then try to figure out the best way to maintain that fire rating. So well, with the fire rated assembly, that should not be a problem. With a fire if you, rated window. If you window, get a fire rated window. Yeah. It, like what if, was if originally that's, If that's possible to get one, then um, oh, yeah. that's a uh, an option. But also the um, other scenarios that we've looked at is, is potentially getting like just a sheet of fire rated glass and getting a regular double hung window, putting that sheet of fire rated glass behind it, a few different. So mm -hmm. really trying to figure out what, uh, with availability of products, uh, what which one of those scenarios. And so that's why we're thinking, fix the sill height, install double hung windows, bare minimum. And then as we figure out what that rating is, if it isn't in the windows themselves, then um, work with staff to figure out what happens behind those to continue that. You should be able to either prove with an assembly you find through uh, chapter 722 calculated resistance, or you can go to a company and get um, an engineering judgment right. on that product. Oh, and the double hung windows up in the uh, dormers, those were installed to, to spec and it was just, there was oversight um, with the requirements for the, uh, the clearances. So th that's why there's a, they were put in and then actually taken out after to fix that. Re regarding the glass block and that assembly, when Lindsay sends out the applications a week before our meeting, that was my first thought was a redundant window assembly, one that would look like the way we wanted to look it and another behind it. I brainstormed with some of my coworkers who have more experience with me than this and it was kind of hard to find like, is that a UL rated assembly? It seemed far-fetched at the time. If you can pull it off, that's, it seems great, but it seems hard to do. And a single fire rated window in line with the drywall that's gonna be part of your assembly and not sticking out beyond the brick, which is what we want. It seems like that's going to be an easier ask unless you want to get an engineer approval or something like that. Um, and on the slider windows, I'm guessing you don't have any room up there. I mean, I can see siding, but that's assuming where your header is. So you can't make that window larger. Making it larger, I'm not sure. We're kind of, you know, apples and oranges is a larger window, less historically compliant than a slider window of the same original size. I, I like the idea of putting in a, a Munton or some type of dividing piece for that visual element. I assume that could be something that could be submitted to staff for approval. And I also wanted to ask about your front entry door. Um, what type of transparency are you looking at? Are you looking at a half light, a third light? The corner picture, we basically kind of showed the size of it, and it would be full transparency. A full, okay, fully transparent door? Okay. I couldn't tell. The, just looking at the top right, you know, I was right. like, is that like a six by six? Yeah. <laughs> no idea. Okay. Thank you.
have a question for codes. Um, when, in, in regards to these sliding windows, I, I understand that you're okay with that being considered, but what if it were a double hung window? Are you saying that that wouldn't meet the code for you? That's what we're trying to. I'm going to defer to our uh, building chief. James Tenty, Chief Building Inspector, City of Knoxville. What was the question again? It's been presented that the slider window would need to be there to meet the code for egress. So my question is, does that mean that the double hung option as was originally proposed will not work and still meet code? Or is there a way to make that meet code? So if I recall, that is a new opening. That dormer is new, mm -hmm. that bedroom situation, sleeping space is all brand new up there. So the, the, the claim that the headers limit the size of the opening and the windows that can be installed is a, is a problem that was created during the design and construction of this and not a uh, um, existing condition. So the building code requires that new openings comply with egress requirements for minimum width, height, and 5.7 square feet of clear opening. And um, the, what was built did not comply. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. So given that it's a, a new condition, even if the header is limiting in height, we could lower the cripple studs in the bottom to achieve a compliant height with a double hung window, presumably. Correct. Can you clarify what that means? The lower roof there is the other, the to lower the sill height, mm -hmm. the main roof goes below it. And so we would have to cut into and, and do like a flattening of the roof there, just to point that out. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's really room for that. I got a little overconfident looking at the interior. Mm -hmm. I think in this case, I'm fine with either a casement or a slider. If no other commissioners have uh, a comment, I can make a motion. It's going to take me a second to look through the conditions that Lindsay had. And just as an observation, which might make things a little easier, when I copy and pasted Lindsay's staff recommendations, um, it looks like we have kind of four subparts. So you have entryway, doors, second story windows, and slider windows. So it may be kind of helpful to think of it in those terms, those four categories. Sorry, it's a little hard to read when everybody's just staring at me. <laughs> um, I guess the last question before we make approvals, do you have it on good authority, even just a verbal from a fire marshal building inspector that you can put two windows, redundant windows to achieve this fire rating on the second floor? We're basing that off of some conversations we had and basically the way the third floor was done with the drywall being behind it, it would be the same concept where 
there's that second mm -hmm. layer behind the, the front glass. So do you think thing. you'll be able to install these double hungs in line without moving the glass block an inch into the inside? We think so. And if not, then it'll have to be moved, you know, in, um, but the, uh, based off the thickness of the framing and then the rig, mm -hmm. we think so. But again, if not, it'll have to come down and go mm -hmm. back up or something. Part of me thinks we sh I should make the motion to almost disregard the glass block and just say you are the outside window needs to be double hung and your interior fire protection could switch to a fire rated glass or any other assembly you need. I mean, again, if it's an interior element, it's not really within our purview, but I don't want to say keep this glass block right. exactly where it is. Yeah. Um, all right, I'm going to make this motion slow instead of writing it all out. I'm going to make a motion to approve per staff recommendations with the conditions that the uh, entry vestibule be a metal door with half light fire rated glass that the second story windows ha are double hung with a concrete sill with masonry changes to reflect that uh, double hung size and concrete sill change, that the existing sliders to remain, are there any other conditions I'm missing? That seemed three. Okay. Did you get that, Dallas? The second condition was that the second story windows have uh, double hung windows in line with the plane not projecting out from the brick with a concrete sill to reflect other windows and the necessary masonry changes for that. Thanks. All right. I'll second that motion. We'll call a vote. All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The motion passes. Gentlemen, thank you for your due diligence and thank you for your patience. Unfortunately, we see more after the fact work in Fort Sanders than any other neighborhood. And so we get a, probably hypersensitive to that. So uh, we appreciate you taking the time to come back and, and, and do this. So thank you very much and good luck. Thank you for your patience. And sure. All right. Thank you guys for coming. The building department. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have any other business this morning? All right. If not, the meeting's adjourned. See you next month.